Hello everyone, on this video we're gonna talk about a new feature of Swift 5.2. To have some data to play with, let's have a user with a name, an email, the team the user belongs to, that it can be null because it's optional, and if it's an admin or not. And then we just have an array of users with this data where they usually have an email but one of them has not a valid email and it doesn't belong to any team. Up until Swift 5.2, if you wanted to get, for example, all the names of this array, you could just use the great map function and open a closure here and just with the short syntax, you could get the name or any other property of this array of users. And here you have it, you have the name of all the users on the array. The collections in Swift have other methods that, for example, if you wanted to just filter the users that are administrators, you could use a similar pattern and then you can even chain a map and get the name of these admin users. And here you have, we only have an array with one name because it's the only admin user that we have on the array. You could also, for example, if you wanted to get all the teams that all the array of users belong to, you could do a similar pattern again with the team and because it's optional and we're using a compact map, we're just gonna get an array with the teams, not with the meals in them. So all of this is a common pattern used many times a day on Swift applications, on Swift code, and you can see how it's a little bit repetitive, the fact that just to get the property of an element on the array, we need to open a closure, we can use this short syntax, which is nice, but still, you can see a pattern that is repeated over and over. And this is a little bit annoying, especially when Swift has a really powerful feature that does precisely this. It can get a property from an object in a generic way. And that's, of course, we're talking about key path. And to get a key path from a user name property, we can just use this syntax. And if you look here, the type of the array, it's a key path from user to string. With this feature and these kind of APIs, what this new proposal did was make the language more consistent with itself. Now you can just do a map and you can directly use the key path syntax, even the short one without defining the type because the type is already inferred from the array of users and you have exactly the same output. It allows us to use key path where before we were using functions that went from an input type to an output type. As long as the key path generic types match this signature, it all works. It even goes through the optional syntax with the compact map, everything is working nicely. Some of us were already making this functionality available before this change on the language by implementing a map, but instead of using a function that, that makes a transformation, we were using a key path. And this can easily be done just by creating a key path from the element to the T, which in every case it's different. And here the implementation is as easy as just doing what we were doing before. So we have the element and we can use the key path that we are given to extract the property of it. The inconvenience with this is that now you have two APIs. You have the API that accepts a function and the API that accepts a key path. And both do exactly the same. So what this new feature allows us is that when you have a function like map on an array that goes from one type to another, it has an input parameter, an output parameter, and when these types match the types of a key path, like we see here, so in this case, a key path goes from user to string. If we have a function that goes from user to string, you can use a key path instead of a function. And the compiler is basically just write this piece of code for you. So for free, you get one API that accepts functions and automatically that API also accepts key path. This idea is really powerful and makes using these high order functions that the array has, for example, like map, filters, compact map, all these functions can now accept key path directly, which is a super common case that we had to be writing like this all the time. Just to make sure that you get the point, I want to show you how this functionality has nothing to do with the standard library. You can just write your own functions and you can profit from this new functionality of the language for free. For example, 
let's write a function on array again just because it's easier because we already have one of the generic types which is the element and the other one is gonna be a string so just for the sake of it let's write a function that checks if all the emails in the array of objects are valid emails or not you could write this in many ways I'm just doing it with a for loop manually to make sure that you see that for us this is still a normal function even if we end up passing it a key impact we don't have to worry about that and the is email is just a computer property that I wrote that checks if it contains uh, an at symbol basically nothing fancy but now we're able to use the check emails that expects a function from a user to string we could write that as we have always been doing with the closure syntax but now we can actually pass an email key path that goes from a user to an email and because we have one user here that doesn't have a valid email it returns false so everything is working but it's important to see that we're passing a key path but we receive a function and we just treat it as a function so I think all of this shows how powerful this small addition to the language is. And not only that, but it also makes the language more consistent with itself, which makes proposals like this really nice to be accepted. If you want to go deeper into the proposal, the proposal is this one shown in the screen right now, key path expressions as functions, SE0249. It goes into the explanation of this, the detailed design of it, and some different future directions like one of them it's treat key paths as callable which is related to the static callables syntax that we introduced in a previous video and even making expressible by key path literal a protocol that can be implemented by other types so that's it for today thank you for watching if you learn a little bit and you enjoy this kind of videos please like the video and subscribe for more content like this See you all next time.